Scottsdales are devoutly religious. Praise the Lord for he is kind. Amen. I don't think my parents would allow me to listen to pop. I have never been on a date. There's better ways to find out about girls than dating. I have not kissed a girl in a romantic way. <laughs> In 2008, the popular show Wife Swap featured two families. Two families couldn't have been more different than these two. The Stockdale family lived in a small town in Ohio, while the Tonkovic family lived in northern Illinois. Kathy and Tim Stockdale raised their four boys on a farm in the country in Ohio. They taught the boys at home and were very talkative. Do not allow any cussing. Aw, rats. I think that dating has uh, physical dangers like pregnancy. It's not worth it. And the boys are also homeschooled in order to control their influences. It's important we have control over their character and their education. In order to earn privileges, the boys must gain tokens by completing a chore they must then check off on a chart. On the other hand, Lori and John Tonkovic had a lot less structure and rules for how they raised their children. In fact, Lori's son's girlfriend and daughter's boyfriend were both part of the Tonkovic family. Kathy gave Lori a guide to running her house. Lori was shocked by how strict the rules were at the Stockdale home. Have you ever thought about dating? Uh, I think I should wait for time when I can settle down. If you saw a beautiful girl walking down the road, wouldn't you think, oh man, I'd like to take her out on a date? Um, that might be a first reaction, but second thought, no. How do they find somebody to marry without dating? Unless it's an arranged marriage and the way they're living, I wouldn't be surprised. The boys, who were between the ages of 11 and 19, were not allowed to date and had never been in a romantic relationship with anyone. The boys pay 20 tokens to listen to a radio show. It's important to instill in our children that you need to work and not expect to have a handout. The work I have to do is sweep the porch, sweep all the downstairs, clear the table, unload the dishwasher. It's kind of boring after a while. All four boys were in the Bluegrass Stockdale family band. Kathy was proud that she taught her kids conservative values and morals. In contrast to the Tonkovic family, where the kids didn't do much to help mom Lori, they had to do chores to earn privileges. You listen to the radio? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who something. picks those? Mom does. Oh, this is great. This is a hundred tokens, right? Yeah. And that's okay with you? I would rather not have to do the tokens to get like the radio show. Hmm. Lori was very upset about how Kathy and Tim raised their kids. She said, they're slaves. In an episode of Wife Swap, Kathy said, it's important that we have a say in how they grow up and what they learn. On June 15, 2017, almost 10 years later, a 911 call came into the Ohio County of Stark. The person who called quickly ended the call. Following the rules, the police went to the place where the call came from. It was coming from the Stockdale's farm in the country. When the police came, the door to the house was already open. They heard a gunshot as they got closer to the house. The police had to stop and call for help to make sure they were safe. James, who was 21 years old, was found by the front door. James, who was 11 years old when the show aired, had been shot and killed. Upstairs, the dead body of Kathy Stockdale was found by the police. She too, had been shot. They quickly found the second to last son, Jacob Stockdale, who had shot himself in the head. He was barely alive. He was taken to the hospital right away. Even though it was clear that Jacob Stockdale did it, it wasn't clear at all why. A 20-gauge shotgun that was always kept in the house was used to kill the people. Jacob had never been in trouble before, and the police had never been called to the Stockdale home. Even though their older brothers had moved out, Jacob and James still lived with their parents and played in the family bluegrass band. Down with my guitar, and that was all we played. Late last, uh, yesterday afternoon at about 4.36 p.m., our office received a 911 call from the residence. It was a landline call, not a cell phone call. It was a hang-up call. Um, at that time, after we received the hang-up call, which we do in a number of cases on a daily basis, we responded deputies to the residence. Upon arrival at the residence, the deputies noticed that the front door was open. They gave verbal commands, there was no response, uh, and at that time, um, there was a gunshot that went off. Uh, 
After the gunshot went off, they uh, tactically approached the house uh, when some backup arrived and discovered that the suspect, uh, Jacob Stockdale, had uh, attempted suicide and, and shot himself at, uh, when they arrived. Um, they also discovered two victims in the home, a 54-year-old Catherine Barbara Stockdale and 21-year-old James William Stockdale. Both have, uh, were deceased as a result of a gunshot wound. Uh, deputies continue to investigate the case along with the Stark County Coroner's Office. Uh, once we have more information available on the case, we will provide it to you. Currently, um, the suspect, Jacob Stockdale, is in Cleveland Metro in critical care. Any run-ins with Jacob prior to this incident? No, ma'am. Not related to the house? None at all. You haven't been there, no run-ins, anything? Uh, it seems like a really nice, wholesome family. What are you looking at from yeah, any motive yet at this point? You know, it's hard to, you know, kind of surmise what the motive may have been. Um, you know, there's, there's some speculation. Um, don't really want to get into that part of it, but, um, you know, we'll continue to investigate this case and try to determine if there's a motive. Just do not know. Father, indicate any issues that have been leading up to this? None at all. Mental health issues? Never mentioned any of, of that nature. Have you guys been aware of this family? I know we're hearing a lot that they were performers, they would travel around a lot. Were they? We're, we're learning that as well. Okay. Uh, we were not aware of that when we responded. <clears throat> as was asked, we had never uh, had a reason to be called to that residence in the past. So we don't have anything in our, our CAD or any information that we'd been there in the past. So. In fact, the band had gigs all summer long. Jacob had won awards for his musical skills more than once. Tim was not at home when the people were killed. Tim was heartbroken when his wife died. He said she was a wonderful mother and was passionate about her Christian faith, natural health, and organic farming. The oldest son, Calvin, who is now married and has kids, said about his younger brother James that he is a talented musician and a source of family fun. Catherine and James both died at the same time so their funerals were held at the same time. After the shooting, Jacob Stockdale had several surgeries and medical procedures. He was also in the hospital and rehabilitation centers for more than a year. Stark County now with an update on that double murder investigation, Danny. Well, that's right, Ramona. You can see that it's quiet here now at the Stockdale family home. It's just about 24 hours since the Stark County Sheriff's Department responded here and that they say that they found 25-year-old Jacob Stockdale, a three-time Ohio State fiddle champion with a, an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound and his mom and brother dead in the home. Once he had recovered enough from his injuries, he was charged with murder. Okay. Uh, in this particular case, there's been a report that has been filed in this case, and just to walk through it by Dr. Archangela Woods, it's her opinion based on a reasonable psychological certainty that you are not suffering from a severe mental defect at this time of the charge, uh, and she lists her reasons. Um, she indicates it's her opinion beyond a reasonable psychological certainty that Mr. Stockdale was not suffering from a severe mental disease at the time charged. Um, she's indicating that uh, Mr. Stockdale, in her opinion, uh, based on a reasonable psychological certainty, he was not suffering from a severe mental illness 
or disease or defect at the time of the offense charged. Uh, and an opinion regarding wrongfulness cannot be rendered because uh, his defense is that uh, he's asserting his innocence. So we have this report, we've done the competency, we've done several competency evaluations, we've now done the uh, sanity evaluation. We have a trial scheduled for May 4th of this year. The defense, are you able, first of all, to get in to see your client okay? Your Honor, we are not at this time able to get into Heartland. We are, however, able to have uh, Zoom calls. Okay. Early in 2019, his defense team asked for psychological tests so that they could say he was insane and not guilty. This report issued by Psychodiagnostic. I am also going to be filing the not guilty by reason of insanity plea and ask the court to order the appropriate evaluations for that plea also. After a second evaluation of Jacob Stockdale's mental health, the state put him in a locked psychiatric facility to get help for his mental health. The court case would not move forward until Jacob was found to be able to stand trial. Jacob tried to get out of the place twice while he was there. A judge decided in February 2020 that Jacob Stockdale was able to stand trial. Jacob finally faced the music almost four years after he killed his strict mother and younger brother. In April 2021, Jacob admitted to killing two people and was given a sentence of 15 years to life for each murder. The sentences for each murder will run at the same time. He won't be able to get out of jail until 2048.